welcome to Power Talk. I am so happy to have you all here. Love you all. Thank you for joining us. I've got a really great show for you today. This one's a little bit different. So my guest today is Craig Waldron, and he is a handwriting expert. And I think you're going to enjoy his story because he's got a really unusual story about how he got into this as a line of business. And you can find out everything about Craig and sign up to get your own handwriting analysis done with him at professionallifesolutions.com. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm looking forward to this. Well, you're, you're, uh, you've really helped me a lot. I had Craig analyze my handwriting uh, 15 days ago, I started doing my homework. I think I'm on day 16 today. Okay. And um, I'm actually noticing changes. So oh, cool. it's really good. But Craig, how did you get started with this handwriting analysis business? Well, so I was taking a uh, break from my work. I went to a, a con conference in Denver, Colorado. At the time, I think it was called uh, Global Sciences, where they had speakers from a lot of different areas. And uh, there was a booth there. Uh, someone was doing handwriting analysis and I thought, you know, what is this? And I stood there and listened to what she was saying to people. Oh yeah, if you change your handwriting, you can, you know, change your life. I'm going, Oh really? Right. So I handed her my paper of handwriting. She looked at it and she says, okay, tonight, this is what I want you to do. And she gave me a, a you know, an exercise to do. So I did that. And, uh, just a little side note. So my paper, when I handed it to her was curled up because I pressed so hard on it. So she says, well, so you have a little bit of stress in your life, which I did at the time. Uh, anyway, so I did the handwriting exercise. I slept better than I had for like six months. And so I thought, okay, there must be something more to this. So I went back down and said, okay, you got my attention. Let's, you know, tell me more about this. So at that point, um, she gave me some, uh, some letters to work on for the next 21 days, which it took me about, uh, I think it took me about three months to, to get the 21 days in a row without skipping a day. Anyway, as a result of that, one of the letters I was practicing had to do with money. And at the time I was working for a national consulting firm and I wasn't due for any kind of raise, promotion, anything like that, but I got a $500 a month raise, which was significant for me back then. This was in uh, about 1994, 1995, something like that. So I thought, okay, and then there was just too many things happening from it that I thought, okay, there's really power in this. And as a result, then I went on and said, okay, I'm, I'm going to get certified in this and uh, so I can help other people. And it took me until now, well, it took me until 2013 when I had my second near-death experience to say, hey, what you're doing is not the most important thing in your life to do right now. You know, this is what you need to be doing. And so that's what got me back on the road to actually doing this now. I, I sold my business at 20 years back in November and uh, I just started doing this, just started flowing for me. Yeah. And, and so viewers, I heard about Craig through a friend. So I got in touch with him because I was fascinated and um, he immediately picked up some absolute truth stuff about me from what he saw in my signature um, and then other stuff out of the writing. But well, you got my attention with money, Craig. What letter is it that you have to practice to get you more money? So it's the small letter G. Okay. So and how should if, it look? So the small letter G needs to have, you know, the circle at the top, but then the loop at the bottom, what I was doing is I was just leaving it open. I you need to complete it complete the loop and bring it back up to the line, the baseline where you're writing your letters. So I'd left that open. When that's open, that means money comes in and goes out just as fast. And, wow. you, don't, and you don't, you subconsciously, you don't utilize money the best, most effective way when it's closed. You just, on a subconscious level, money starts working better for you. Okay. And one thing you noticed with my handwriting was that I might have closed it, but then the tail of it at the end of a word was pointing downward. And you told me I need to always point upwards, right? Right. So when, so if you think of it like a, you know, when somebody's frowning and if your letter's ending going down, that's as a uh, indication that, you know, things aren't working as well as they could. It kind of works against you. Gotcha. So, um, so this sounds like it, it, it 
created a pretty profound shift for you. What was the thing that surprised you the most about the effect that handwriting has on your outer world? So the most surprising thing was how simple of a thing changing a letter or, you know, parts of your handwriting actually impacted my life to, you know, made changes. I, you know, it was just, just too simple, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think one of the things that, um, that you told me that has been the easiest for me to implement was we were talking about the small letter T and I was crossing mine in the middle. Um, what, what effect did that have? So uh, the small letter T has to do with self-confidence, completing things. And so in school, normally they've taught us to cross the T in the middle, which means we're average for a really high level of confidence and being able to complete things. The small letter T, even though it looks weird because we're not used to it, cross it at the very top. In fact, if you want to energize yourself during the day, I wouldn't do it too late in the day but just do a, a half to a full page of small letter T's crossed at the top. And if you have yeah. a T in your, you know, in your signature, make sure you cross it at the top because what's in your signature is five times, has five times more impact on life than the rest of your handwriting. Now, I found that it looked weird to me to cross it at the top. So what I did was I started making the T's a little bit shorter so that it was pretty much in line with the other letters, but it was still crossed at the top. Is that okay? Yeah. The other thing that you can do, because um, you don't want to do too much at once, you could, you know, depending on the person, you could just move the cross up higher to the top, maybe, you know, slightly below it, but with the idea that over time you're going to raise it completely to the top at the normal height. Gotcha. So what are some of the areas in an average person's life that um, are going to be the easiest to change by changing handwriting? Well, the biggest one and the most important letter in the alphabet is the capital I, which has to do with relationships, both male and female. So uh, I, I can't tell you exactly what would happen for one specific person, but here's some of the things that people have told me that changed their capital letter I that, you know, they experienced. One was uh, one, one guy changed his capital letter I and his dad, who never has called him, called him just to chat. Uh, another one, the relationship improved. The, the other person in the relationship said, hey, you're doing this differently now. What's happened? You know, it was a positive move. And uh, hey, you know, another person in the relationships with other people that they interacted with seem to go easier for them. So mm. it's, you know, some of the things are very subtle and sometimes other people will bring up the idea of, Hey, you know, if you notice that you're doing this differently now and we're not, we might not, we might not even notice it ourselves. Interesting. You know, I, um, that wasn't one of the letters that you gave me to practice, but I have noticed that I am doing that better. I'm making my, um, my capital letter I's much more balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the top part, the top loop and the side loop are pretty much the same. Right. So, um, you know, so that, that's happening easily. The, and the two that I'm supposed to be practicing that are giving me difficulty, um, is the small letter S. You told me to make sure that my small letter S's have a point at the top. And about half the time I'm able to do that. I mean, I do it perfectly when I'm practicing. Right. But in just my handwriting in general, in my journaling, I'm noticing that I'm still rounding them off about half the time. Right. So it's, the, and you notice uh, if somebody wants to kind of experiment to see, hey, is there actually anything to this handwriting? If you sit down and write, uh, you know, letters, how they are on the, I'll call it the perfected alphabet, which I can send copies to people of when I work with them. But if you do that, you'll notice when you're, if you're not making them the way they are on that alphabet, your, your forearm and the muscles in your hand, you'll actually feel kind of a tenseness or even cramping because your, your body has muscle memory that holds that in place and you're trying to change that which you can do. Mm. Usually it takes about 21 days. Uh, there may be some people that they might need to go as long as 90 days to, to do it. Got ya. 
Now, would that be that um, handwriting, the perfected handwriting chart, would that be something that you might be interested in um, sending to viewers if they sign up for your newsletter today? Sure. Okay, so listeners, if you go to professionallifesolutions.com and sign up for, for, for Craig's newsletter, then he can send you a, uh, the PDF of this chart so that you can begin to work on taking yourself back to where you were taught in school about cursive handwriting, which is really interesting because they don't teach that anymore, do they? Not, not too much. And, yeah. you know, people... I had an interesting comment from a retired uh, professor. Uh, she was, you know, all about not using the cursive anymore. Number one, she didn't like it in school, which most, you know, a lot of us didn't. But she was looking more at efficiency and computers and things like that. And I, I'm all for that. And in addition, when, when we're able to, you know, journaling, writing in a journal each day is the place where you can use cursive handwriting that actually helps you Basically, you're programming yourself. You can correct your program. They never told us that when they taught us handwriting in school. They just said, okay, you need to form these letters this way. And in fact, some of the uh, teachers instructed people to write the capital I backwards, not knowing that there's make, it makes a difference in how that affects relationships. If a person writes a capital letter I backwards, it impacts their ability for relationships. It makes them confused as to how to actually interact with males and females in a way that really works. So it just it wow. kind of reverses their abilities to do that. Well, it's just like you were talking about when we make the, the letter T and cross it in the middle, we're just programming ourselves to be like mediocre cattle. You right. Know? And why would we want to do that? Yeah. Exactly. And the thing is, we, most of us don't even know that that has anything to do with, you know, that it even affects our lives at all, but it really does big time. I had, yeah, a, exactly. I had an interesting experience with an attorney. Um, we were talking at one, one day and at lunch and uh, the handwriting thing came up and he said, hey, can you look at my handwriting? I said, well, we don't have anything here. Let's just look at your signature. So I worked with him on his signature and said, okay, let's make these changes and let's see what happens. And I didn't see him for probably about six weeks. And he says, Craig, you're not going to believe what happened. And he proceeded to tell me a couple of things that he'd been trying to resolve that he got resolved. One was he had a, uh, he was in a temporary uh, rental and that the person was going to sell and they were going to, you know, they're going to have to move out and they really liked the neighborhood. They wanted to stay. What ended up happening was they were able to work out, in fact, the owner approached him and said, hey, uh, if you'll stay in here, then I'll do X, Y, and Z. And bottom line, what ended up happening, he ended up being able to buy the house. Wow. Cool. So, you know, and he named off four or five other things. And he, and he said, I had totally attribute this to the change in my signature. He says, I have done nothing else differently. And the, the guy is a pretty genius attorney. So he's not, you know... He's not this woo-woo kind of believer at all. So that, yeah. that was pretty exciting. That's really fascinating. You know, and um, the, uh, the other one that I'm having difficulty with, again, not when I'm practicing, is the small letter F, trying to make the loops um, to be equal. And, you know, and, but when I start journaling, again, because I do journal, I journal every morning, and I journal longhand cursive, in a, you know, in a notebook, I don't do it on the computer. And um, I notice that I still have a tendency to rather than go do an up loop and then come back down, I just go down and have the loop only on the bottom. And I'm trying to catch myself and go back and make a loop on the top, but it's not coming natively for me. Right. And, and it'll take some time. And the thing is, when, when you're practicing that and you see that, hey, I left the loop out, go back in and correct it. Yeah. I'm doing that with the important. S's as well, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fixing them, you know, writing over them. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm too soon. I'm only two weeks into this really. Um, right. So I don't really know that it's actually making the life changes that I'm desiring at this point, two weeks in. However, I feel better about mm -hmm. it. There's, there's a sort of um, an up, upliftment, 
the, and maybe that's the small letter T thing. I, you know, I'm not sure, right. but I do seem to have more um, motivation, more enthusiasm, um, overall sense of well being. Cool. Uh, in the last two weeks. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's really, um, that's really helping me, I think. So I'm going to keep at it. I'm, <laughs> and I'm bound in dead gum determined that I am not going to miss a day because I don't want to have to start the 21 days <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, don't do like I did. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. I know that I'm, I'm going to be done because I've already gone in a, a separate journal that I'm doing this practicing in and I've numbered all the pages so that I know today is day 16 and, um, and I'll be done by the time I leave to go to France. So it'll all be good. Cool. Good. <laughs> so hopefully I don't have to practice while I'm in France. I can just enjoy <laughs> my trip and eat myself into oblivion, which is what I'm planning on doing. So, um, uh, so you've told us about this attorney. Are there some other people that you would like to talk about that have experienced major changes in their life by changing their handwriting? Yeah. So, um, one of the biggest ones that I see often because there's so many people that have the capital letter I that they need to, you know, work on is with relationships. Um, one lady was having a heck of a time with her sister and they just, basically they weren't talking mm -hmm. and, uh, and they, they just didn't get along. And, and one day her sister called her and said, Hey, I just thought I'd catch up and, you know, of course, you can imagine her shock and hearing from her sister and then having a pleasant conversation on top of that. And, you know, it's just kind of awe inspiring to, to see that kind of thing happening. Um, another person in, in their relationships, and this had to do more with their business world, they found that they were able to, you know, understand the other person more. And, and this had to do not only with the capital I, but there's another letter, uh, the small letter E has to do with communication. And when, when the small letter E is open, then people, uh, there's a subconscious energy that goes out that says, you know, I'm open to hearing what you have to say. And by the same token, they also get a message that, hey, listen to what this person has to say because you can trust what they're saying kind of thing. Yeah, and so, you know, that's, that's the other, another thing that, you know, has been real positive. That's one of the things you mentioned in the, uh, in the work that you did with me a couple of weeks ago was that my little E's were open and, you know, which is a darn good thing as a life coach, you know, you want that to be open because <laughs> you want people yes. to approach you and, um, you know, spill their guts and know that, know that, um, you know, that, that it's going to stay with me. It's not going to be shared and that it's safe. So, right. um, yeah. So, you know, if you, people that have the open E, small letter E's in their writing, they might even notice that people come up to them in public whom they've never met and they start telling them their life story kind of thing. Mm -hmm. People just feel drawn to them and it's like, hey, I need to talk to you about, <laughs> my wife's one like this. We uh -huh. go to the store and she's talking to someone. I said, who is that? I don't know. She just came up and started talking to me kind of thing, you know. Well, I have a couple of friends who tell me that, that people do that with them. So I'm going to go check their handwriting and see if their E's are open like that. Yeah, yeah. That'd be interesting to see. So are there some um, exercises that people might benefit, the people who are watching today? Sure. So one of the ones that I've used a lot uh, is what is called push-pulls, which is basically just drawing uh, kind of a, a zigzag line on, a, on line paper between the lines, up, down, up, down, with sharp points on the top and bottom. You do a, a full page of that, uh, you know, whenever you're feeling stressed. For example, one time I was in a doctor's office waiting impatiently as normal, and there was a, there was a little kid in there just throwing a fit. I mean, just, I, I thought I was gonna have to get up and leave and miss my appointment. So I thought, I didn't have any paper to, or anything to write with. So I just, in the air, took my finger and started doing that. After about two minutes, everything just calmed down. That's beautiful. Now, when you do that, does it matter if it's straight up and down or should it be at an angle? It's gonna be at a slight angle because you're going you know, from left to right. So okay. up, down, up, down. Like that, okay. So that's, that's a stress reducer for anything. That's or if you are, before you go to bed at night, you want to improve your sleep, push pulls. 
Cool. Now, so when you work with a client, you know, I'm not, I, I'm going to let you say what you do because I know what you've done with me, which I really okay. am appreciating. Um, so what's the first step? So the first step would be to get a handwriting samples from ideally get three different samples from three different times, like maybe first thing in the morning, in the evening, or, you know, after some stressful event, because our handwriting tends to change as, as things go on. And it's not what any one single letter looks like. It's what the pattern looks like overall. And then, so that, that needs to be done on uh, blank, you know, unlined paper, white paper with a ballpoint pen. And then those samples are mailed to me because there's characteristics on the page that I need to be able to see from the original. Ah, okay. And so then once you've analyzed it, um, then what happens? Okay, and, and then at that point, then we arrange a time that we can uh, talk, you know, via Skype or just telephone for that matter, and go over the sample and the letters, and we discuss the things, the traits that, you know, were identified, and then to give them a specific homework assignment. We don't try to change everything at once because it would just overwhelm us. So usually it's about three letters. And then I also give them some pointers about changing the signature because the signature has, like I said, to have five times more impact on our life than everything else in our writing. You know, and an attorney like, just, all he did was just change his signature and got those kind of results. So, you know, you nailed me um, a, a family issue that I had just on how I wrote my last name. Um, and you asked me if I had problems, you know, relationship problems in my family and in particular I did have with my dad's side of the family which my last name is my family name um, mm -hmm. and just in the way I was writing my signature you know you you nailed that and so that's what been one of the things that I have been really conscious of is how I'm writing my signature every time I write it to make sure that uh, that I, I make that last name right and also you said that one of the reasons why I was having difficulty manifesting a relationship was because how I'd like scrunched the the letters of my first name all together you know so I'm being very careful about making sure that they're all spaced out nice neat even I'm just taking my time a little bit more instead of just scrawling the way I used to sign my name mm -hmm. yeah when I first I had to change my signature and so when I first did that, at the time I was working for this uh, company and my signature was on a lot of documents. And so when a document came through with my new signature on it, they had called me and said, okay, we're going to need you to write us a letter and tell us that you've changed your signature and this is your new signature. <laughs> that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So that's apparently how much different that it was from what I was doing. And, and in people's signatures, a lot of times, when we get in a hurry, we just kind of scribble out a line, you know, mm. and we, we think that that's unique and good, but uh, unfortunately, that is the easiest kind of a signature to forge. Wow. Versus when you've written it out in, you know, good letters, it's hard to duplicate that because there's different pressures and, you know, the way this, the strokes look on the page. So, so just know if you're in a hurry, it's better to slow down, sign the signature. And I'm talking to myself because I, I, you know, I'm, my attitude sometimes is, you know, God, give me patience, but I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you say that, uh, you reminded me of back in high school and college when I would forge my mother's name on notes to get me out of things. And she had this tiny little meticulous handwriting and it was like almost impossible to get it right. But mm -hmm. I, I wrote enough of those notes. I finally got pretty good at it. <laughs> telling on myself now. <laughs> well, this has really been fascinating, Craig, and I really do believe that it's making a difference in my life, and I highly recommend Craig's work to you viewers. So go check out his website, professionallifesolutions.com, and get on his newsletter, and um, perhaps you can make a huge difference in your life uh, by changing your handwriting. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Yes, thank you very much. All right. And so viewers, join me next week. We'll have another great edition of Power Talk. And then I'm going to be away for a week because I will be um, in France uh, attending Alea Dow's Deep Dive. 
So I will miss you for one week, but then I'll be back the following week. So until next time, remember, people who take responsibility for their lives create the reality they desire. Ciao. Thank you.